Dr. Eric here to talk to you today about male hormones and the role that they play in fertility. As part of your infertility workup, your doctor will probably order some blood work that will check your hormone levels so that we can get a better understanding of why you may suffer from infertility. The typical hormones that we look at are the testosterone level, the estrogen level, which is typically called the estradiol, which is the predominant form of estrogen, the LH, FSH, and prolactin levels. Let's talk first about testosterone. Testosterone is the most easily identifiable hormone when it comes to male fertility. It's the first one we think about and the first one that men think about. Testosterone is important on multiple levels. It's really important as far as controlling libido. It's important as far as male erectile function. And of course, regulation and production of sperm cells. Low testosterone levels can result in impaired sperm production. Now, one of the things that I often hear in my practice is patients saying, well, if my testosterone level is low and I have problems with infertility, shouldn't we just give me more testosterone and that will then create a increase in the production of the sperm cells? And the answer to that is actually no. The problem with giving extra testosterone to somebody is that they get it in a peripheral form, meaning the testosterone level throughout the body will be the same. But that's not how the actual distribution of testosterone should be found in the body. Instead, the amount of circulating testosterone or the testosterone that we find throughout the body, meaning when we check the blood what your testosterone level is, is actually about a thousand times lower than the concentration of testosterone in the testicles. The testosterone level in the testicles being so high is important for the production of those sperm cells. When the testosterone level drops, to a lower level, the testicles actually shut off the production of those sperm cells. So when a guy gives himself testosterone, either a gel or a patch or injections, he may raise his blood levels of testosterone, say from 500 to 1200 or 1800, but the testosterone concentration in the testicles will drop down to that same number. So instead of being 50,000, it's now 500. That's a big problem as far as sperm production goes. And that's why we don't use testosterone itself as a treatment for infertility. So if you're seeing a doctor for infertility and he or she says, we should get you on testosterone, that's usually a sign that they don't quite know exactly what they're doing. When we're looking at understanding testosterone, you also have to understand how the testosterone level is actually regulated in the body. There's a hormone that's produced by the pituitary gland in the brain called LH or luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone goes from the brain down to the testicles and it tells the testicles, certain cells in the testicle called Leydig cells, it tells them whether they need to produce more or less testosterone. When the LH levels are high, this is usually in response to a testosterone level that's low. So it's the brain's way of trying to spur the testicles to create a higher level of testosterone. When the LH levels are low, that would typically be an indication that your testosterone levels are high. Now we don't typically see that in a otherwise normal male, but we will see that in a male who's been giving himself testosterone injections or gel because the brain circulation, the blood in the brain, is picking up a higher level of testosterone than it's used to seeing, so it will think that it's overproduced, so it will tell the LH level to dial down so that it will think that it's telling the testicle not to produce so much testosterone. Of course, the testosterone is actually being injected or, or given what we call exogenously, and so the low LH level won't change the testosterone level, but that's the, the body's response to that elevation in the overall testosterone level. The reason it's really important for us to look at both the testosterone and the LH is that in a situation where somebody has infertility and a low testosterone level, the LH will give us a sense of, is this a problem in the testicle itself? Or is this a problem potentially in the brain as far as dysregulation of the hormonal axis? For example, when the testosterone level is low, 
if we see a high LH level, that's telling us that the brain is responding appropriately, but that the testicle just can't produce enough testosterone. That's a situation that we call primary hypogonadism, where the testicle itself has some dysfunction that's preventing it from creating enough testosterone. The flip side of that is if you have a low testosterone level and the LH level is also low, it tells us that there's a problem centrally, meaning in the brain, where there's not enough LH to tell the testicle, hey, you're not doing your job, you need to make more. That sometimes is related to prior illnesses or toxic exposures or potentially something like a brain tumor. One of the hormone levels that we also tend to look at is prolactin. Prolactin is also produced in the same area as the LH, but when the prolactin level is elevated, that may be an indication of a small tumor in the brain that can cause the LH level to go down inappropriately and the prolactin level to then go up. That can suppress testosterone levels and you may find that fixing or getting rid of that tumor or treating it with medications all of a sudden creates a proper balance between the LH and the testosterone and all of a sudden the fertility problems resolve themselves. Another really important hormone for male fertility is estrogen or estradiol. Most commonly guys think of estrogen as something they shouldn't have. It's a male hormone which is testosterone and a female hormone which is the estrogen or estradiol, but that's not true at all. Men need appropriate levels of estradiol. Estradiol is important in male libido, male erectile function, as well as male fertility. The problem arises when the estrogen levels are too high. Elevated estrogen levels can decrease a man's libido, can create erectile dysfunction, and can also impair sperm formation. Most commonly, the reason why a man would have an elevated estrogen level is because of some abnormal conversion of testosterone into estrogen, which is done by an enzyme called aromatase. Most commonly, this is attributed to fat cells. Although aromatase is found in many other organs in the male body, in fat cells, aromatase is particularly abundant. And what happens is that excess fat cells take this circulating testosterone and then convert it into estrogen, which becomes a problem because that elevates the level of estrogen when compared to the level of testosterone and it then creates those problems with erectile dysfunction, low libido, as well as impairing the generation of sperm cells. The last hormone that's really important to look at is a hormone called FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is similar to LH in that it's produced again in the pituitary area of the brain. FSH is important because it's the hormone that actually tells specific cells in the testicle called Sertoli cells. It tells those cells, hey, you need to make more sperm. Of course, there then has to be a mechanism for the testicle to feed back to the brain to say, okay, we've made enough, we don't need to make any more. The way that the message gets back to the brain is with a hormone called inhibin. Inhibin then circulates back to the pituitary and when the inhibin level is high enough, it tells the pituitary, we're good here, let's dial down the FSH so that that FSH then tells the testicle, we don't need to make any more sperm, we have an appropriate level, we're all set. When the FSH level is high, that's usually an indication that the testicle is not making sperm. When there is low sperm production, the inhibin level goes down, the inhibin level that's then sensed by the pituitary goes down, so the pituitary tells the FSH area to then ramp up production, the FSH goes down to the testicle and should tell the testicle to make more sperm cells. But in the situation where there's infertility, low sperm counts, azospermia or oligospermia, meaning low or no sperm counts, that may be a sign that the testicle itself can't produce sperm at all. You'd see a high FSH and a low sperm count, indicating that there's a problem in the actual production or maturation of those sperm cells. And that may be something that is unchangeable or it may be due to a toxic exposure or radiation exposure or something of that nature that may be modifiable, but it also may indicate that the testicles just don't have the proper machinery to create sperm cells. When you put all of these hormone levels together, it should give us a really good sense when combined with your semen analysis, what the actual 
problem is as far as your infertility goes. And it'll also help to guide us as to what kind of treatments may be necessary or should you be looking at intrauterine insemination or IVF or some other type of assisted reproductive technology. As well, it may indicate to us that you need some additional blood work or potentially an MRI of the brain, potentially medications or some other intervention that can help to rebalance, re-regulate those hormones so that the sperm cell production and the testosterone production are appropriate. Hopefully this video has given you a better sense of what the hormone levels mean, how they're interrelated, and how they impact on fertility.